guys so i had to um end the october vlog there i don't know how many parts this is going to be i'm hoping to make it two possibly three maximum um but yeah today i've been basically dyeing my hair all day like washing and dyeing it i've just got deep conditioner on at the moment and i wanted to let you guys know about this mas mascara this hair mask it's by hask or hask and it's color color Hari melon oil it smells like watermelon is what i was thinking and it makes sense and it's um, a color protectant deep conditioner that shields and replenishes color treated hair thought it'd make sense to try this out after i dyed my hair today and it smells amazing the slips really nice it's really thick as well um, and i've been able to detangle both of my finger and my tangle teaser but i thought i'd just give you guys a little update on that because <laughs> i wanted to try it out on camera but i don't know i thought maybe my opinion might still be shared even if i haven't done like a demo or whatever and um, the rest of the day is kind of wishy-washy, I don't really know. I'm in and out reading a new book, which I didn't get a chance to show you. I started this on Sunday, my lunch break at work. And that is Basic Witches by Jaxa, Saxena and Jess Zimmerman. And it's how to summon um, success, banish drama and raise hell with your coven. So I actually won this in a giveaway last year um, from a Bounty of Books channel. And so I've got all like the press release stuff. So I'll read this out to you guys. <clears throat> so it was released on the 12th of September last year, which is the day before my birthday. And it's 12 99 So there's no denying it. These days, the witch is it. Whether you grew up reading Harry Potter or watching Buffy and Bewitched, witchcraft has become a cultural touch point. Fashion reports, flowery black dresses and blood red lipstick healing crystals grace the pages of glossy women's magazines and websites run how to hex your ex features. Women are taking back the identity of outcast, unruly women and reclaiming it as a positive, empowering lifestyle. And during uncertain times when it's easy to feel powerless, um, the symbolism and practices of witchcraft can help us tap into our hopes and silence our fears. Basics Witches is a self-care manifesto for women who want to embrace the power they've been told is dangerous and transform it into the personal purpose, truth and intention. Peppered with enchanting illustrations by Camille Chu, readers can gain insight and practical application in the form of spells, mantras, incantations and rituals for using modern witchcraft to harness. And then it breaks down the sections like the chapters of the book. And then it says, sidebars throughout the book spotlight pop, pop culture icons and witchy history, from the origins of the magic broomstick to why witches dance naked in the woods. Full of humour, heart and wisdom, Basic Witches is the ultimate lifestyle guide for readers who want to tap into their inner sorceress, as well as the perfect gift to share with the coven. I need to make, remember that it's more like a self-care. It's definitely a different vibe to the other witch book that I read uh, July time, I think it was. So I've got to keep remembering that and sort of base my opinion on that form rather than an actual witchy witchy spell book sort of thing so then it just breaks down um who the authors are and yeah so i will be updating you guys um momentarily sporadically throughout this other part of the vlog on my thoughts on this i've already started updating goodreads um by this point with my thoughts so far um i have a few conflicting ones but I'm sure I'll summarise that at some point later on. <laughs> anyway, welcome to part two of the vlog. Hi guys, so I'm actually going to sit here and start doing my um, unread uh, physical books video for my channel. I think this might go up in November, at least I'm aiming for it to go up as part of like a series of me reorganising my bookshelves and stuff. I have sort of an order in my mind of what videos in that sort of series I want to go first and I think this is one of the first ones of them it's not like an official series or anything it's just kind of it makes sense in my head to do it this way um but it's going to be split in half technically because I'm going out in a couple of hours and I don't think I'm going to finish this um because I've just got so many books <laughs> so I'll probably finish the second half of the video when I come back but obviously then the lighting's going to be different hopefully people don't mind too much yeah I'm just going to crack on with this now starting with this big box here and my current new books so yeah this is going to be a long video <laughs> this is the carnage of just one box and a bag Jesus Christ I'm not looking forward to the rest of this video <laughs> So we're just going out now to get my granddad. He's got an eye appointment for like a checkup on this operation that he had. Um, I'm hoping to do a little bit of reading in the car if I don't get travel sickness and a load of reading whilst we're waiting for him in the checkup doctory bit. So yeah, <laughs> let's go. Never taken whatever you told me. I know what I could be. Is 
Don't say that. Oh, man. She's just chilling there. You will be mine. Yeah. Doctor Who. So, regardless of the fact that I just only today filmed that uh, physical unread books video, I got more books. But I went to that hospital that I mentioned in that video because um, my granddad had an eye appointment so it was inevitable that I would get some more books sorry there's a bit of dust there so I picked up this one Robert Harris's Fatherland what if Hitler had won just because it sparked a reminder of me of um, that book I read a couple of years ago um, it was more of a satire approach and I don't know I don't remember liking it an awful a lot I don't know I can't really remember my thoughts but this one sounds like it might be a more serious intake I just realised that fluff that I tried to get rid of is just following me um but this says, Fatherland, April uh, 1964. The naked body of an old man floats in a lake on the outskirts of Berlin. In one week it will be Adolf Hitler's 75th birthday. A terrible conspiracy is starting to unravel. And apparently he's the author of 11 novels. This one sounds like it will be more of a serious approach to like alternate history, um, which I am a fan of. I just don't read a lot of. Um, so hopefully I enjoy that one. And then, oh, I didn't mean to throw that. Then we have a Man Booker Prize 2015, A Brief History of the Seven Killings by Marlon James. Now, it's actually the Man Booker Prize um, title here that intrigued me. And then I was like, hold on, let me have a look at this again. And I looked in the back and I didn't realise, but it was um, about Bob Marley. So it says, Jamaica 1976, seven gunmen storm uh, Bob Marley's house, machine guns blazing. The reggae superstar survives, but the gunmen are never caught. So from the acclaimed author of this other book comes a dazzling display of masterful storytelling exploring this near mythic event spanning three decades and crossing continents a brief history of seven killings chronicles the lives of a host of unforgettable characters slum kids one night stands drug lords girlfriends gunmen journalists and even the cia gripping and intentative ambitious and mesmerizing a brief history of seven killings is the one of the most remarkable and extraordinary novels of the 21st century so yeah hopefully i get some insight of both of those and um, enjoy them. Then I did some clothes shopping. It's something about the autumn, guys. It's seeing all these autumnal colours and these different cuts of clothes, it's just making me excited and want to wear new stuff. So bear with me whilst I get all those out. Doing this video reminds me actually, I need to try this stuff on. So we've got a skirt, which is very pretty. Um, I saw this awesome outfit. I'm so glad it wasn't a dress because it looks really cool. It's like a, I don't know, like a jumpsuit, I guess. But it looks like so. Oops, if I can find the top of it. I think that's so cute. I said to my mum, I feel like I'm getting like a bit hippified. <laughs> but I love it. I just love all these floaty things. I think I was wearing a few floaty things in the summer, but when it's these sort of colours, it just gets me like all happy and excited. And then this top, which is very different for me. I think I have one top similar to this, but it's like a sheer one. And I don't know, I always shy away from deep V-cuts like this. Like I usually wear t-shirts. But this was just so pretty and the colour was gorgeous. They have this in white as well, but I really like this one. It doesn't look as flattering just sprawled out like that, but on the hanger it looks really nice. And then two other green colours that I obsess over during this time of year. Basically, it's these red shades and these greens I think look amazing. Um, but I got another pair of these sort of trouser things, which I showed in the last vlog, I think. Um, so it's got this sort of bow detailing and it's a quarter length cut and I think the reason I'm getting more attracted to these without knowing it is because now that I watched the first episode of Doctor Who <laughs> the new Doctor wears a style similar to these this sort of colour and the quarter length and I'm like subconsciously inspired by that so yeah thanks Doctor Who and then lastly for the clothes I got this like pleather skirt with a long zip down here and a cool buckle I was unsure but I think I can pull it off maybe fishnets or something and I forgot I went into my hair beauty store because I needed to get some hair stuff that I ran out of or running out of and basically it's just two hair dyes so crazy I realize I'm not showing it sorry crazy color candy floss and adores neon pink neon pink pink is what I put in like the front section of my hair and candy floss I dilute with other shades and put that for the rest of my hair and I finally got myself a decent um well I think it's decent afro pick because the other oh, the other one I had was plastic and all the teeth snapped because I'm very rough <laughs> apparently this one folds down as well so whoop whoop I'll try this out when I go out next which will probably be 
Friday. Yay! Hello, so I am reading Basic Witches and I've just got to this part, it's about the different types of personal demons and it says, number seven, Frank, and it's got like pictures of these personified feelings and such. It says, Frank's just a dick, don't listen to Frank. <laughs> wise words, my friend, wise words. <laughs> but no, I aim to be finished um, by the end of the day, at least. Um, I'm hoping to start some video editing in like an hour or so. So if I don't finish this by then, whilst that starts saving, I'll probably finish it off. Do my review and everything. I won't be talking too, too much because I want to do that duo review that I think I've been talking about in this vlog so far. So yeah, I'm having mixed opinions so far. I'm like, some parts I can't, I don't know, some parts I don't like, some parts I do. Majority, I think I do like it, but there's just some bits that are sitting poorly with me, I suppose. So I've just sat and edited my video with like all the books that are on my TBR. Now I'm going to go and fix myself some lunch I think. Probably catch up on a little bit of YouTube and hopefully smash out some more pages of that book that I'm currently reading. But first I need to get rid of my holiday band. I've been putting off chopping it off for a while now but it is time to say adios amigos. Bye bye. I will always remember the good times I had. <laughs> it's time to face reality! <laughs> So, oh, let me pause this. Um, as you can tell, oh my god, hold on, I've got a really itchy nose. Oh god, I scratched it so hard, it's like, I feel like it's bleeding. Um, as you can tell, I've been into vlogs of late, and I've just come across this uh, channel, like, in the past couple of days. She's called June... So, June Stay. She's so lovely. I found her through Instagram, in, like, tags and such. Um, and, oh my god, she's lovely. She does, like, really long vlogs that I seem to fall into creating of late. And yeah, she's, oh no, she's been really nice. So I'm just currently watching one of her videos. But the point of this little clip was for me to say, I'm finally sorting out all the clothes that I want to get rid of. So as you would have seen in these videos, these vlogs and hauls and such, I've been getting a lot of autumn clothes and that. But I need to actually have space for those. And my mum keeps telling me, I've got to stop buying stuff because there's no more space. Um, so I'm finally going through all this stuff, like all the clean clothes and that, and trying things on and looking at things and re-evaluating them and thinking, do I want it? Does it fit? Should I get rid of it? Um, I've also just put all, like I freed up another chest of drawer, and I put all the skirts and shorts in the double part of the wardrobe, along with the dresses and jumpers, sweaters, that sort of stuff, and it seems to be holding okay. So now what I'm going to do is categorise my t-shirts, because I think that's the most item of clothing I have and I'm going to separate like t sorry I needed to transfer some folders onto my computer which I said I'd done a long long time ago um, because my memory was full or whatever but basically I was saying that um, I'm separating my t-shirts like and um, my casual tops and that and then collared shirts which I am growing quite the collection I think um, for separate things just because with my collared shirts I can wear either casual or fancy and if I get like I don't know a different position in terms of career and jobs or whatever at least I can separate that it still has my character like their fun shirts um, mixed in with like regular plain collared shirts but it'll be easy to sort of find them because sometimes I just want them to chuck underneath like a top like this if that makes sense um, so yeah that's how I'm gonna do everything I think so yeah i've got a lot of mess back there at the moment i'm just going to chuck that vlog back on and i will carry on i have as many collared shirts that i thought so if i don't fill this uh drawer i'll just fill it with the rest of my t-shirts because lord knows i have many of those <laughs> So it's just gone 11 p.m. and I realised I don't really show you the um, clothes that I got rid of. So um, in my calculations, so far this month I've bought eight new pieces of clothing items. So if I have surpassed getting rid of eight pieces, I will be happy because at least that evens it out for me mentally. I don't know if that really makes sense, but anyway, here's what I got rid of, and it's really sad because I have <laughs> people have described me to be a hoarder basically, and I hold quite a bit of sentimentality that's the word sentimentality 
to things like objects, materialistic things, clothes, so it is sad. But I've been just trying to make myself feel detached because some of this stuff just doesn't fit. Some of them I don't wear anymore. So we've got these pair of greenish khaki trousers. I don't even know, they're not really jeans. This top, the stripy one, don't go towards that anymore. These shorts, sad times, they didn't fit me. I was trying them on for my holiday and I was like, oh, they don't even go past my thighs. This top, it's been a bit snug for a while now and the, one of the middle buttons keep popping open. <laughs> I've had that since like, I was 14 though and I'm 22 now, so that probably should go. This top I used to wear all the time. That's just not really my style anymore and it's not as comfortable as it once was. These jeans, oh my god, I loved them. I got so much wear out of them and then the flyer got busted and I only started wearing it with like long tops because the flyer would just randomly pop open every time I'd seemingly not do anything. So um, yeah, these need to go anyway and I think they're getting a bit snug now anyway. Another pair of shorts, I used to live in these. I always got tartan shorts and I wore them with like kind of boyish clothes really like I'd be like a Victorian um newspaper boy is what I'd imagine the style to be imagine a little flat cap I never did get a flat cap but that was that was the style I was going for at some point these other pair of shorts bright orange and then lastly which was the first two things I actually put to throw away or get rid of give to charity whatever were these skirts that I used to live in I absolutely adored these but they do not fit anymore I think I got them from like a Little Woods catalogue or something. So let's count. That's two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. Yay! That's ten pieces of clothing I no longer need. And also two more that I'm getting rid of that I wouldn't have needed to if I just wanted to make a balance, if that makes sense, of the clothes that I've bought in. But yeah, I'm happy with that. Also, quickly want to mention whilst I'm here, I have literally just finished Basic Witches um, and written up my review. As I've already said quite a few times, I want to do a duo review of this and another book, so stay tuned for my thoughts on that. Good morning, I just had the fright of my life. Just ran downstairs because it sounded like someone was like at the door, at the front door, and I was like, oh, maybe it's the post. No. Came upstairs and I realised the window cleaner was at my window and it frightened the heck out of me. But mum usually goes um, to his house, doesn't live far from us, and drops the money through his door. So I was like, oh my god, I didn't know he was coming today, I don't know if he has a specific day. It just terrified me, to be honest. I was like, oh. <laughs> but hi, hello, how are you doing? How's it going? Uh, I'm just getting ready to go out because I'm going to see Venom today. Apparently you don't need to see any of the other Spider-Man films or any of the reboots or the remakes. Um, because Venom's more like a standalone film and it's just like the origin story of him. Um, so, can you hear him? Um, so yeah, I'm going to see that a little bit later on today. So I'm just finishing my makeup. I'm using the palette. Where did I put my palette on? <laughs> By um, Tammy, the Revolution Tammy palette, um, which is awesome. So yeah, I'm going to do that and then I'm going to make myself some breakfast. And do you like my top? I'm wearing it. It's my It top that I got from... Asda that I showed recently, I think it was in the other vlog, um, which, yeah, it's, I'm sure it's already linked around somewhere if you haven't already seen it. And I don't think it glows in the dark, but we will see when I get into the cinema today if it does glow. I'll have to update you if I remember. <laughs> so I haven't yet read anything today. That will probably be left until I'm waiting to go into the cinema or tonight, if I do read any at all. But, yes, hello. I've undone the fro, so I'm ready when it's time to go. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I did that, but um, nice bit of re lyricization to From Boys to Men, I think that's what it's called. Basically, I don't, I've undone my fro from the Bantu knots that I've had in my hair for like two, three days maybe. And uh, this is how it came out. I used my new afro pick that I forgot upstairs, damn it. It's so cool. Wait till you see it. It folds up and everything. Um, but yeah, so this is how the colour turned out, by the way. The pastel pink that I put on the back of the hair and the bright straight up pink that I put on the front of my hair. I'm a little bit annoyed that I don't have like a more of a hanging fringe, which is what I was hoping to get um, due to the way that I did the Bantu knots. Sorry about the darkness. Um, due to the way that I did the Bantu knots this time round, uh, which was basically the 
my fringe section I sort of twisted it forward like cane row twisted and then did regular twist um, for the bantu knot but hey ho I've stretched it out fluffed it up I'm not at the shape that I want it to be but I think that might just be because it's still growing out I feel like I'm at like an awkward length at the moment I just need more you know just just more plus my hair doesn't have as much natural volume because my hair was soaking wet when I decided to do the bantu knot out style which I think was a mistake because it took ages to dry and it was just really thin from where I'd stretched it in that straight position and I kept it down so it doesn't have it's very slippery at the moment because of all the product I put in as well and it's just so straight feeling even though it looks far from straight but yes um, here it is I said afro pick it doesn't look like one does it but just wait transformers robots in hold on hold on malfunction hold on Difficult to do with one hand. In disguise. Ha ha. <laughs> so they just like slap down. How cool is this? I could just throw this at someone. That'd be so cool. Well, hey. Whoa. Awesome, right? Awesome. So yeah, I'm gonna head in out. I'm gonna be heading out soon. I'm just catching up on like Big Brother. Like, when am I never? I'm always playing catch up with it. So, <laughs> Ugh. anyway, I will speak to you later. I don't know if I talk about my thoughts on Venom in this video or if I'll just talk about it in my wrap up but there's that <laughs> so update on the glow in the dark top the outside parts of it did seem to glow when I was walking around or when I was inside walking around I need to go to the loo um, so I was walking in and out so I'm just taking my shoes off um, and it seemed to glow a little bit also Venom was much better than I was expecting everybody was giving like mixed reviews and stuff but it was quite good, but I'll, I'll do more on that in my video, which is the wrap up. But whilst I'm here, oh, that's really low. <laughs> whilst I'm here, I want to do a bit of a unboxing thing. This is such an awkward angle. Um, basically, what day did I order it? Let me just check my diary. So on the 8th, Monday the 8th, I placed a couple of Etsy orders actually. So this one here is from, what did I even call it? I think it Mattock the Hair. And I'd recognised the artwork because I realised I follow the Mattock the Hair page on Instagram. Um, uh, but this was coming from like the Etsy shop of the woman who creates the illustrations, I believe. I think it was Jack, oh, I can't remember her name. Um, but if I remember, I'll put the shop in the description. So trying to cover up my dress, but it's got a cool little... Um, magical stamp on this side over here so let's see it's basically like their october not a subscription box because it's like a one-off payment you just buy whichever box you prefer i thought it was going to be a bit bigger than this but honestly looking at the pictures i can see that is about this size it said 23 dollars so i don't know whatever that is um amount into pounds gotta be careful i don't rip it but basically um what i could understand it was a bit of a spontaneous buy but it's like a handmade little book of one of the creations of um, Mattock the Hair. I think one of the little adventures. And some little bits of artwork, I think. I think it's like art cards and stuff. It's just a few little bits and bobs. All handmade, so that kind of makes sense for the price. Because, you know, you're paying for their time and their skill. So, let's have a little look to see what I got inside so it does have a picture to show you what you do get inside so you're not complete blindsided but it's like this it's really really sweet um everything's wrapped up by the looks of things so this is the little um business card I guess you call it here it is Jackie Lovesay or is it Lovesay art and it looks like so so it says Ma magical books prints artwork fabrics matic the hair Com. So it seems like they have their own website aside from Etsy and this is some of their information as well You can see all that so it's got her Etsy which is Jackie Lovesy Art her Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, um, Pinterest and email there and then this is oh she, the thing that really made me happy is that she took attention and spelt my name correctly um, ah oh, so sweet so it says the League of Lid Curving Witchery and it's like a little card and then I've got a little note here it says Imogen most magical thanks from the potionery Jackie how sweet I'm so I'm really happy that she took it into consideration and then just again some tissue paper 
and then underneath is another bit of tissue paper oh it opens this way by the seams of things like so oh that's so sweet oh bless so we've got like a little leaf a little cute leaf oh i feel like it smells nice i don't know it's not strong or anything but i feel like i can smell something so it says on this little strip here i love how oh i don't know it's like medieval feeling to me but magical medieval so it says no matter who we are where we are how tall or how small there's an oily bit of <laughs> zorkliness in us all i'm assuming that's a quote from one of her little books or something so that's really cute over here we have all m okay i'm guessing that's for matic the hair but we have like a little envelope oops I just don't want to ruin everything. I want to keep everything like intact and neat. It just, it's just so nicely presented. Right, so inside here we have a little Halloween badge. So they're all obviously the October box, so it's all like Halloween y themed, I think. So a cute little pumpkin Halloween badge. I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see that. Sorry. I am filming off of my phone again. Then we've got another little red leaf. How sweet. I'll pop these all together actually over here. Oh, these are really pretty. So these are the art cards. They've got a signature on the back. Let me take them out of the shiny film. Oh, they're really nice. Oh, wow. Okay, so... Oops, sorry. There's one of them. And then here's the other one. Oh, wow. That's cute. I'm wondering, do I have to buy the other little books um, before I can read this one? Or not, I'm not too sure. Oh wow, okay, so this must be the little book inside, but this is another piece of artwork. This is so cute. I think this is the same as what's on the badge. There we go. But yeah, I've been looking into supporting like little indie companies and stuff, and it just makes me feel good. So yeah, I'm looking for more like little bookish indie boxes, not necessarily subscriptions, because I can't commit myself to that all the time i just like making like one-off purchases here and there or choosing so if you've got any suggestions specifically specifically on etsy as well then let me know so this is how the book's wrapped it's got these cute little i'm assuming more of her illustrations as stickers to hold it down i don't want to rip them so let me try and oh that peeled off really nicely okay oh it really did peel off nicely actually look how neat that is and then inside, oh, it's a little book. How cute. It's all handmade. That is absolutely adorable. This is The Clutterbust Hallows, Dale Towers number no. 4 by Phil and Jackie Lovesay. That is so nice. I love the um, back and front cover. Let's show you a bit of, oh, wow, look how it's made. It's just so, there's something nice feeling about it. I love the colour paper that it's on it's written like that oh it's lovely oh how exciting and they've got a little glossary at the back as well um i'm assuming all these words that i wouldn't otherwise know so yeah they've got the artwork absolutely beautiful i'm really glad i gave this a go and as i said i follow the um matuk the hair on instagram the artwork is absolutely magical and stunning and beautiful um i think it's good for children as well so yeah, I'll let you know how I got get on with this little book. I'm not sure if it's on Goodreads, so it might not count towards my reading goal, but hey-ho. I might make up a little entry for it or something. But yeah, that's what I just wanted to show you guys today. Um, I guess let's go back to another clip. I need to take this makeup off, I tell you that. You know, you just feel it sitting on you. It's not even that much makeup because I don't really have any face stuff on. But you know when it's there and you're like, ugh. Anyway, catch you later. Hi, everyone. So not very well. I have a feeling that they didn't actually put soy milk in my Starbucks frappuccino yesterday and now I'm feeling ill. Maybe it was the cream because I do get soy milk with cream. Usually I can handle the cream, but maybe this time I just couldn't. Anyway, in terms of reading progress, I read the third and second to last short story in Summer Days, Summer Nights. And I'm saving that last story, as I mentioned in my previous vlog, for the Autumn Readathon. At the end of the month um which i think one of the pros or what they called one of the prompts was to read a short story so i'm cheating and i'm saving one little story no it's not autumn related but still um and so i've put that down and i've kind of dipped back into 
um, Doctor Who The Vault by Marcus Hearn. I'm about halfway through. I've been reading this on and off for like a year or two and it's because it's quite boring now, it's dull. Like it's really interesting but it's just so fact heavy. Um, so yeah, I'm actually skim reading it a bit at the moment which is terrible. But um, I'm still absorbing information, just not as much as I would be if I was reading it at a slower pace. Um, but yeah, so that's the update for the moment. Hello! So I feel like it's been a while since I've clocked in on this vlog. Really, it was probably like a day or two ago. I, I really can't remember. But current reads at the moment are Doctor Who The Vault. I've actually made quite a bit of progress on this, as you can see. I was about just under halfway I think when I picked it up again this month after quite a few months of neglecting it and my goal at the moment is to try and finish this or get as close to finish as I can before the 20th because earlier on today I just really looked up the dates for the Autumnathon and Autumnathon <laughs> Autumn Readathon <laughs> um, and I, I feel like I my TBR is okay it's not nearly finished for October but I feel like if I finish this one then I can give myself leeway and kind of take the autumn reader form a little bit more intensely because remember I intention I intentionally I initially wanted to just basically read one book for that <laughs> and just say hey look I took part and it wasn't even a book it was like the last story of a short story collection but I'm thinking that might be a little bit lacklustre so I'm hoping perhaps one of the other books on my TBR, Hush Hush perhaps, I think I might have said this was kind of for one of those prompts as well. I think I could force that into a prompt. But yeah, I'm thinking if I focus on this one, the Doctor Who uh, book, I can finish that off or get as close to it as possible and then I can focus on kind of compiling another collection of books that I can hopefully push into those prompts and um, make it more of a challenge. So that was a rambling of sorts that kind of just went on and on and on. But I'm going to leave you there now and get some more reading. Oh, actually, before I go, I have been watching a lot of booktube this morning. I watched a film, Begonia and uh, Big Fish and Begonia, and it was beautiful. I'll, I think I might do a full review on that, actually. But after that, I kind of binge watched a lot of YouTube and I was finding new channels. Like some of them I've yet to watch their videos, but I think they're all linked. I think they're like booktube friends in a way. And it's really nice because they're a diverse um, bunch of girls. This one um, is Bookish Babbles. Um, she's Karina or oh, Katrina. I think her name's Karina, if I remember correctly. And she's so lovely. Um, and she's so awesome. Like, there's more fire. I forgot my candles on. Let me just check it's all right. Yeah, it's all good um and she's so cool like um she started like five months ago or something and then took like loads of breaks but she's explained why she had this massive reading slump um that really smells like burning i'm gonna i'm gonna blow that out but yeah she's awesome and then when i watch the others videos i'm sure i'll let you know at some point or even on twitter i've been talking about it on twitter as well but yeah anyway enough rambling back to doctor who and checking on that candle oh okay that's why it's not funny it's because it's finished <laughs> It didn't burn very long. I swear I've only used it a few times, but it's done. It smells great though. It's Candy Violets by Memory Lane Candles. Hello. I look absolutely rough, um, but I've got a bit of book mail, and maybe I should wait until everything arrives, but I'm excited, and I want to open it now and make sure everything's all good. I think this is the necklace I ordered from an Etsy shop um, for a Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children inspired bookish jewellery. I want to wear it to an event that I'm going to in November. So let's have a look, shall we? Okay, so there's no advertisement or anything um, about where it's from. And I can't remember the Etsy shop off the top of my head. Um, If it is that. Oh, hold on, there's information in here. I wasn't sure if I had had to have paid custom charges, but it doesn't seem to. I didn't hear the door go and they posted it through my letterbox, so I guess it was all fine. Ah, lovely. Yeah, so it's from the company, oh, what does it say? Black Magic Factory on Etsy, and it's the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children book quote. I knew there was something peculiar about you. Ransom Riggs pendant necklace jewellery. This was... Um, you can choose your style and the finish, so my style is in a chain, I think you can get it on a keyring or a bracelet or something like that. 
and my finish was vintage brass slash bronze so shipping was expensive it's 12 dollars on top of that so it came to 23 and you can make slight alterations so i asked if i could have the character's like name um alongside it i can't remember if i asked for the character and ransom riggs's name uh, but let's see so it comes in a little cute box here Oh, yes, so I asked for just the character's name on it. It looks so antique. How precious is that? Wow, so it would sit... Oh, it's quite long, actually. Looking at it, it didn't look very long, but it's quite long. First of all, it's in this awesome... You can see, like, the dome shape. Oh, it feels amazing. Um, and as I already said, it says, I knew there was something peculiar about you, and I mean that the highest compliment. Yeah, it's just the abbreviated version for the title of what the jewellery is called. But yeah, that was said by Miss Peregrine. So instead of having Ransom Briggs there, she changed it to Miss Peregrine for me. And I absolutely love it. I'm really going to look forward to wearing that, particularly with um, for the event. I, I was looking for... Um, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children inspired tops and stuff but again a lot of them were coming from the US and they were more expensive than I was hoping for I should have looked on Redbubble I might look on Redbubble and order something but I feel like the next couple of weeks are going to be expensive for me so maybe I won't I don't know if I see something that really catches my eye on Redbubble if I do look which I'll probably look after I film this little bit then then I might just have to cave. But yeah, I'm happy this came all in one piece. I'm very happy with this and very excited to wear it. So there's that. In terms of reading, I haven't read anything yet this morning. I've edited um, some gameplay for Little Nightmares, which I want to have uploaded for Halloween. I've got to check on that upstairs, actually, because I think it might have finished saving. So I'll just um, schedule upload that. My piano just made a weird noise, like something's living inside it. That's scary. Um, but yeah, that's all I've done today. It's like going up to... I don't really know what the time is. Maybe it's half one, but I'm sitting here watching Big Brother now, so yeah. I've been up for forever though. I woke up at eight o'clock, went out to the shops, and I need to get cat food. But yeah, it's been a slow day. Hi friends. So I'm in a dilemma. I've done my hair and everything, but I keep failing. I don't know if any of you have like natural kinky curly hair, but I need your advice. I keep failing at these bantu knots. Like I used to love them when I was like when my hair was relaxed. So for those of you who don't know, I used to have like straight, chemically straightened hair, and I cut it off and I started to go natural. Right, so this is my natural hair, you know, minus the colour and everything. That's obviously I wasn't born with pink hair. Anyway, I like the products that I'm using to get this result, which I'll show you quickly now. So um, I first like wet each strand. I should probably have filmed this so you can probably see what I'm doing but I wet each like section so I had eight bantu knots if you don't know what they are look them up they look pretty funky and um, so I had eight bantu knots this time round and for each section I'd wet it to stretch it out and you know get some water in there then I'd go in with Aunt Jackie's curl maintenance then I'd um, smooth some bumble and bumble BB curl conditioning mousse then I'd go in with some coconut oil, followed by a bit of the Lee Stafford Choco Locks chocolate shake, just because I like the scent. And then like, I'll be brushing throughout that. Then I'll do my twists and I'll go around my head. I don't know if I'm just going in the wrong direction, but every time, like the first, not the first time, but the most recent time before this that I did it, my hair wasn't dry enough because I did it on soaking wet hair. So I thought, okay, don't do it on soaking wet hair. That's probably like an obvious thing. So I did it on like hair that it had been a couple of days since I washed it. So I was just re-wetting in it just to get some slip and movement. So it wasn't soaking or anything like that. And I thought, yeah, it works better. But it just keeps coming out like this. Like a big puffy mess. I really need to do the roots because when I have it like this, I look really weird. Like, look at that line of darkness. Um, so, I, I mean, it kind of looks cool. But I want more defined twirly twirls. That's why, that's why I wanted a bantu knot what am i doing wrong someone help me i mean I like the fluff and it's like it's got movement but this isn't the result i was after anyway that's my rant i'm going to see a star is born today um i only want to see it because it's lady gaga i don't really know too much about it i mean i looked up the synopsis but beforehand i didn't really know what it was about i heard a song and i was like that's a cool song and i realized it was from that film so i thought Let's go watch it. I'm going with Chloe. Um, I think we're going to go get something to eat as well. Um, so I don't think we're going to do much of a reading today. However, let me just show you my Doctor Who at the vault. Look how much I've got left. I cannot believe I'm actually going to... I'm going to finish this this year. 
probably this month look at that that is just like what's that maybe 30 pages that's crazy i don't know why it took me so long to read through this like I, it's just mostly pictures and that but as i've said before like it can be quite not dense but just like boring and admittedly yes as i mentioned earlier i have been skim reading it but still like I can't believe it, finally. And then I can tackle, eventually, I'm not saying straight after, eventually I can tackle this massive folklore of British myths and legends that I've been reading for even longer, possibly four years, possibly five, I don't know. And I've already got 50 pages into that one, so <laughs> it's a Reader's Digest, like it's a mammoth book. Do you know what? I could just show you what that book is. I mean, look at this. And this is mainly filled, whew, it's dusty, with text. Like, look at that. It's a bloody textbook. <laughs> um, but yeah, I should start reading a few pages, perhaps before bed or something, make that a little challenge. But yeah, that's all I've got to say. Help me with my hair. Unless you don't care. What, what? Okay, so update. My hair looks all right at the back. Like, that's the kind of curliness. I mean, yeah, I'd like it to be more defined, but that's the sort of curliest curliness that I'm after. It's just the front that looks weird. Oh, there's a dog out there barking. Hmm. Oh my gosh, guys. So I've just got home after seeing A Star Is Born. And my evil little heart is broken. Like, that was fantastic. That was so, so good. Like, ah! Oh, I didn't know. I was saying to Chloe earlier, like, obviously, Lady Gaga, she puts 110% into everything, so I knew it was going to be a great film. But you know, sometimes they just have these films and they throw in a celebrity that's not usually like an actor sort of thing just for the name tie in. It was nothing like that. It was like a proper. <sighs> it was fantastic, basically. Like, oh, I cried every time. My throat kept getting tight because I was trying not to cry. And then that, that ending, that ending got me and. The tears were real, but if you haven't already seen it, or even if you have, go see A Star Is Born. It was beautiful and oh, I get emotional thinking about it, oh my god. Actually guys, I think I'm gonna end this vlog here. I know it's like midweek, but I have another sneaky suspicion that the current vlog is very, very long. So yeah, I guess this is gonna be at least a three-parter yet again. I like my things in threes, so I'm not entirely mad about that. But stay tuned for the third part, hopefully the final part of this vlog. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. I think it's definitely been more focused on reading, so hopefully that's all right. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure what the rest of the vlog's gonna contain. But we're doing something for Halloween, me and Chloe, so, or Chloe and I, if I wanna be, you know, grammatically, linguistically correct. Um, so I'll probably vlog some of that. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha